I want to thank uh, Keenan, Dr. Keenan, and myself personally. At this point in your uh, your agenda, the governor was supposed to be here. I got a call from the governor's office midday yesterday that he was called to the White House. And he had uh, not put the burden on them, but he had put the opportunity for us to hear from Dr. Keenan. So thank you for standing for the governor. He's an educator in his own right, and I, I emailed him and told him now, the governor is supposed to make some commitment here. I want to hear the governor's plan, and along with your commitment. So I want you to know that. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to uh, take a few minutes just to, uh, uh, again, thank Mr. Jackson for that uh, nice introduction. When we talk about rural county, Dupin County can be more, no more rural than Dupin County. But I love Dupin County, and as stated by uh, Mr. Jackson, I've been on the local school board since 1989, and I've been on the state school board probably since 20, around 2010, something like that. So I know what education means to, uh, I always call it economic freedom, education, economic freedom. But very quickly, I'd like to talk about, uh, first of all, Governor Cooper would like to send him regrets for not being able to be here with you today. He definitely supports the efforts uh, uh, for rural schools. Also, uh, uh, Congresswoman Clayton, he sends thanks to you. And again, not only to you, a special thanks to you, but to all of you, I uh, thank you for what you do for education for all our children, whether it's urban or whether it's uh, rural. It was, we already know, already know that North Carolina has the second largest rural population in America. We also know that 14 counties are uh, completely rural, according to the 2010 census. Also, 50 NC counties are half rural. I don't have to get into the data about which common sense tells us that two thirds of our school districts in North Carolina are considered rural. Nearly 40% of our state's students are educated in the rural schools. And some of our counties like the necessary resources and also particular connectivity that help our kids stay engaged. Now, Go Governor Cooper understands the problem that we suffer in the rural communities. Therefore, he has set a budget, proposed budget, some certain things that he thinks could make a difference in the education of our children, particularly in the rural communities. And uh, Mr. Jackson alluded to that earlier. The government wants North Carolina to be a top educated state by 2025. Also, his budget calls for investment, investments into better teaching quality and improved student outcomes. And by that, he means uh, how teachers pay, annual classroom supply stipends for their teachers. Also, the NC Best and Brightest Scholarship Program, which allows $10,000 per year to an NC public university for selected students who commit to teaching to an NC public school after graduation. Also, talk about the broadband, the broadband internet connection rule area. $20 million to increase internet access to the underserved households in Tier 1 and Tier 2 counties. Also, he proposed getting students ready for the workforce, called NC Growth, getting ready for the workforce scholarships, connecting students to job training in community college. Also, as Ben alluded to, we have fortunate enough to have a new teacher advisor, Ms. Latanya Patillo, which again has been, been put on the uh, policy team. Before, she's from a rural county, I think it's uh, Columbus County. So she knows all about that too. And then, uh, last as we know, the governor himself is from Nash County. His mother was a former teacher, so he knows all about education. And he has committed himself to improve education. And the administration of the Cooper administration is here to work for the rural, uh, advocate for rural communities and rural education. But for that to happen, we must have the input, the administration must have the input from the constituents. Constituents are you, but those who care about the children of North Carolina. And that's the only way that we move the state forward, the input from and again, thank you for the time. And again, that's a few of the things that the government wants to propose to make this education system a better education system, especially for the rural counties to, to meet the needs uh, of those particular students. Thank you very much.